Welcome back guys. In the previous lectures we have implemented numbers and strings and today we're going to implement mathematical operations and we'll do the first actual type checking. Now, right so far we've been doing pretty much inference and today we'll be checking that the type should match to specific expectations. And let's start from the test. I'm creating the math test. Let's not forget to include it right away to our list of tests. And for example, the addition operation will look like this, right? It's a list where the type tag, that is the first element, is plus, uh, which is followed by some operands. So the inferred type of this should be number, and plus we should check that the operands should be numbers, right? Something we will enforce. And pretty much the same we do for the uh, minus operator, times, and division. Notice that the actual numbers here, like 2, 3, 1, etc., at type checking level uh, are actually not that essential, right? We need to understand the types, but not the actual numbers. Uh, again, this is in contrast with the interpreter, which would return, for example, uh, 5 here instead of type number. And let's confirm it doesn't work yet, right? Our type checker says unknown type for expression, which is precisely correct. So if we determine that the operation is plus, we're going to uh, type check the addition operation. Uh, however, as you can see, all the operations should return the type number. Uh, so in fact, we may optimize it into the generic is binary test. Uh, binary means uh, some operation which expects uh, two operands and we'll check for specific operator. In this case, we're going to check the binary expression. Uh, so our is binary function would test for the specific operator that is plus, minus, times and um, division. Okay. And now let's uh, extract the binary checking into its own function. So first of all, we have to check the arity, right? That it should exactly be two operands. Let's implement this helper function right away. So if the number of arguments doesn't equal to expected arity, we're going to throw. Uh, this minus one is to exclude the type tag. Okay, so we throw. Uh, operator expects a certain amount of arguments. Sounds good. And now we also need to check uh, for the actual types of operands. Uh, for example, uh, this expression should throw. We cannot do uh, 2 plus 3, regardless of the underlying runtime system, which potentially may have some uh, type uh, conversion. We agree that at type checking, we want to have pretty much uh, correct programs uh, and exclude uh, implicit conversions as, as much as possible. So we're going to throw here. And for this, we need to infer the uh, type of the expression 1, right, of the operator 1 which might be arbitrary complex expression, so we have to recurse uh, to the tc function, pass in the first argument, and get its type, t1. Uh, the same we do for the second operand, and get its type, t2. And now, in general, we need to write, if the type of the first expression doesn't equal to the type of the second expression, we're going to throw. Uh, however, we'll be writing this uh, for many expressions, so let's actually introduce a helper function called expect. And this function will expect that both types are actually equals to each other and will throw otherwise. As the result, it will return the past type, either t1 or t2, it doesn't matter because they're equals to each other. And that should be pretty much it. Let's implement the expect. As we say, it should accept the actual type expected and the value and the expression. And we do exactly this. If the actual type doesn't equal to the expected, we throw. As the result, we return the actual type. And now let's implement the throw function. So this is just throwing expected some type, but get some other type. And that should be it for the binary expressions. Let's go ahead and test. And it works. Let's try changing the type of the uh, second operand here to string. And correctly, we see expected number, but got string, which means our type checker already start uh, helping to make our programs more correct. Let's change the first operand, and now it expects the string, which means the uh, plus operator may potentially be overloaded for string concatenation. And this is actually true in many languages. Let's reuse the plus operator to do the string concatenation. So applying the uh, plus to the hello and world should return a type string. And again, the plus operator itself uh, should check the types of both operands, and they should match. So either two numbers or two strings. And since we abstracted away the handling of the binary uh, type checking, this should just work, right? We just expect two types be equal to, and this is true, we have two strings, so let's execute, and all assertions passed. Now, there is one slight problem actually here. The plus operator does make sense for strings. However, the minus operator cannot be applied to strings. 
And in this case, it actually would be great to throw an exception that is applying unsupported operation on these types. Now, to do this, let's introduce the helper function, which returns the supported types for the operator. And now we need to check that both types, that is T1 and T2, are actually in the set of this uh, allowed types for this operator. Okay, uh, and for plus operator, we return two types, right? The string is allowed and the number is allowed. And for anything else here, we just return type number. Now, what happens in the expect operator type? Uh, well, we need to check that at least some of the allowed types are equal to our type. And if it's not the case, we again just throw uh, a node operator type allowed only certain types. And that should be it. Let's try executing. And that's correct. Our type checker says uh, unsupported types for the operator minus allowed only the number type. Let's go ahead and remove and all assertions passed. So congratulations, today we introduced the type check-in and also talked about supported operations for uh, operators and in general supported operations for types. Uh, as an exercise, you may put this method is operation supported on the type itself. Uh, for example, you may extend the type number and the type string uh, with this method is operation supported and number type will return true for uh, all the operators but string type will return true only for the plus operator. Uh, but for simplicity, we just put it directly here. Okay, in the next lecture, we'll start talking about typing environment, gamma, and we'll talk about variables. That's it for today. Thanks and see you in the class.